Hi, this is Tim with the 1916 Company here at Dubai Watch Week 2023 with a man who was a name brand before he was a name brand. Jean-Claude Viver. Sir, thank you so much for speaking with us. Hello, you're welcome. Exciting times. You're famous for building up big brands, but now you're building a small <coughs> brand under your own name. Where did the idea for Viver watches come from? You know, I have the first brand I have built was called Blanta which I bought for 22,000 US dollars. And why did I buy it for that price? Because it was, it had no value. Because Blanpa, when we bought it, they had stopped to produce watches 22 years before we bought it. And there was nothing left, no factory, no people, no machines, no product, no nothing. We just paid for the right to take the name. So we had to build Blancpain from scratch. No factory. We had to rent a factory. No products. We had to bring a collection. No movements. No dials. No nothing. So when people say, I have been used to develop big brands. No, I have learned to develop first a no brand. Blancpain was a no brand because nobody knew the brand. If you stop during 20 or 23 years to produce watches under the name Blancpain, don't be astonished that after 25 years, nobody knows you. People cannot know you if you don't use the brand. So Blancpain was my first experience building a brand from A to Z. And this experience was so rich, was so happy, was so uh, emotional that I never, never could accept the fact that I sold. And because I never, I still cannot accept that I sold, I was only, had only one purpose. I said, one day I want to finish my job at Blanpa, but it will not be at Blanpa because Blanpa belongs to Swatch Group and they will never sell it to me, but I will end my job under the name Beaver. So now my brand Blanpa is the end process of Blanpa. <laughs> Fantastic. And what a watch. Your first model, Carry On Tourbillon. Did you design this yourself? You and your son? Uh, it was designed by my son and myself a little bit, yes. The major part, I would say, is my son. And I gave the little, you know, like when you cook, you put a little bit of salt or pepper. But the main cooking was done by my son. So now the watch itself is extremely advanced. Uh, minute repeater, carry-on, tourbillon, but wearable at 42 millimeters. Tell me a little bit about how the fit of the watch was important to you, because it's not common to see a watch this complicated that's also this wearable. Yes, you're absolutely right. And that's one of our major tasks, is to make a luxury product that is wearable from all the aspects, from the weight, from the, the resistance to the scratches, from the, the water. By the way, the watch is water resistant to five uh, atmosphere. So you can, in, practically, you can go to 50 meters. So that's also very unusual. So we are uh, really, we try to make whatever we produce to be wearable, to make a sense. Like we always try not to copy the past, but to take our inspiration in the past. Speaking of inspiration, is that the reason, the historical importance of the tourbillon, that you decided to make your first watch a tourbillon? We decided to make our first watch the most difficult. One of the last one I did with Blancpain to make it a minute repeater. And then we said a minute repeater is not enough. We should make a, a carillon. It means with three hammers and with three sounds. And then we said we should go ahead and make it automatic with a micro rotor in order to keep the movement relatively small. So we really improved a lot the basic movements and it's not a copy of the basic movement, it's an inspiration of the, uh, 
of the, uh, um, the original first movement. So now the watch you've got right here is the result of years of ambition coming together, but it's going to remain rare. What is the number of watches you're looking to make per year? Because I know you're not chasing volume. I, uh, we are chasing, we are chasing uh, <laughs> quality. And if you chase quality to the extreme, to the extreme, then you will realize that per watchmaker, you can eventually get out one maximum one and a half watches. It means in norm normally it will take you nine months to make one watch. Yes. So in, in a year you can make one and a half. That is now how many people are we? In production, production, we and decoration, the two together, we are roughly 15 people. And how many watches can we produce this year? This year, which is not finished, I hope, I expect that we will be able to make 13 pieces. For the whole year? For the whole year. And the objective for the budget next year is to bring out 20. And the budget 2030, which is in seven years, is to bring out 60. So we have a very ambitious program. But although the program is ambitious for us, it's still a very low-key program because it takes time. It, take, it is time. You know, what we try and what we succeed to make is whatever is invisible in a watch should be mastered as if it would be visible. So the screws are black polished, although nobody will see the screw, nobody will care if your screw is black polished or not, and it will not change the quality of the watch, but it changes our concept. Our concept is that the invisible parts must be mastered as if they would be visible. That's a lot of integrity, I gotta say. So now you have to communicate this to the public. People see a photo online, they don't know what they're getting. Do you go straight to the client or do you have dealers? Is, is it? No, we have, we have dealers. We have appointed seven dealers to cover the world. One in Japan, one in America, one in the Middle East, one in, uh, uh, in the Southeast Asia. So you see, we have six, seven dealers and they cover for us the whole world and they have the mission this year to distribute or to sell 15, but it will be, it will be 13 only, 13 pieces, and next year 20 and so on. Now you have clearly a passion for this because you don't need to be attending Dubai Watch Week to show the watch. No. You don't need to be here. No, we don't. Talk a little bit about that passion because a lot of people know that you managed big brands in the past, but building up a small brand is a product of love. Is that like the love you feel for your son, the love you feel for watchmaking, a little bit of both? It's the love I have for both, of course, but it's mainly the love of life. I love life. I love love. I love love. And all you need is love. That's where the Beatles, 1967. Famous man once said. They said, said it already in 67. All we need is love. And that's the perfect expression of love because the perfect expression of love is art there is no art without love and love is the result of art and we are in the watchmaking art and we respect the rules and the major rule for us in the high-end watches is to create or to give birth to a soul we cannot just have a watch that tells you what time it is that's not enough you can have a quartz watch but we want a watch that you can say i wear love on my wrist i wear a soul on my wrist and this soul is protecting me this soul is helping me in my life that's the role of our watches so our role is much larger than just tell us what time it is. 
Who cares? We care about love, what the watch gives you. And finally, if people want to order one of these watches, how do they reach out to you? How do they reach me? Yes. They can reach me through our retailers. We have, for instance, uh, in America or in, in, in the Middle East, we have Siddiqui here. All these, all these, there are seven. The seven retailers we have in the world, they distribute, they communicate, they tell their customers, I have something very special. I will only get two pieces for this year. Are you interested to have one? Come and have a dinner with Mr. Beaver. He will explain you through this sales approach. We find customers, but it is a one to one. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> and all we need is 15 customers for this year. So there you go. Order a Jean-Claude Biver watch and get dinner with Jean-Claude Biver. That's the best sales pitch I've ever heard. Of course, of course. I, I said that there was an auction about our prototype. On the, <laughs> the prototype, the watch that came out from the prototype has been sold, is sold for 550,000 US. And on the auction, it reached 1.3 million. And I said, I was present at the auction. I said, whoever goes and will get the watch, you will also get a private dinner in my home with a special Ikem wine from 1949. Unfortunately, the guy who got the auction, we, I only know his name, Joe, but I don't know his address. I don't know how I can how I can get rid of him. Uh, so for the moment, the wine is in my cellar still, and the private dinner is waiting. But the day he I hear from him, the invitation is still valid. All right. So there might be some wine for the taking if you're into a watch like this, and I can't imagine who wouldn't be. Mr. Bivera, thank you so much. You are welcome. Thank you.